Bracha this brachos. conference will now be recorded. Before we continue with our discussion of brachos, there is a very fundamental or hachayim hakadosh, one of the classic commentators, uh, I think 16th century, um, on the in, up in the chumashim itself, who discusses who discusses the whole concept of gerus of uh, uh, of converting. And I wanted to learn that with you guys. So the Orachayim, this is the end of Pasha told us. And he writes, you have to know, only in those days, talking about over here, where Yaakov is being sent to the house of Lavan to find his wives. At that, during those times when the holy Neshamot had not yet been sifted lifted up, chosen out from the place where they are held captive. And the family of uh, Avraham, Kisham Kantala HaKadusha Makom. It was clear that the family of Avraham, that is where the Kedusha had found its place. Now, and that's because, as we know, Avraham and Sarah were the first Gerim, the first converts. And whoever converts from the nations is called Avraham. And she's called Sarah. Not necessarily that a convert takes on the name Avraham and Sarah, but they're called after them. Below Hishlam, Binina Kedushab is a common vote. However, he says that the this, this construction, this edifice of Kedusha had not been completed yet with both males and females because Avram and Sarah only gave birth to Yitzchak and not to any girls. And Yitzchak only had sons and not daughters. And therefore the sparks of holiness of the females was still being held captive in the land amongst other nations, amongst others, outside the family of Avraham. And that's why Yitzchak was sent to go find his lost Avedato, his lost object. Now that we've reached this wonderful time, he says, where the, 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 the roses of, uh, or, or the roots of holiness have sprouted, in amongst B'nai Yisrael, amongst the children of Israel, and Yaakov, the children of Israel, that is this Ilan HaChayim, this tree of life. Lo Yisov Adam imatot B'nai Yisrael meshchot haaretz. Right? So now, Jewish people don't go to the families of the land for their marriage. V'im nish'ar mini tzosea kedusha b'toch amim, but where there remains sparks of Kedusha, sparks of holiness amongst the nations, right? They then gather on their own. And after their conversion, it is then showed very clearly, they were lost. These were lost sparks of holiness. Velanuhain. And they are ours. They are part of the Jewish people. And that's why he says why Avraham was insistent not to have a wife for Yitzchak from the Benot HaKna'ani, from the daughters of the Canaanite woman. And also Yitzchak, Isaac commanded Yaakov, Jacob, don't take Canaanite woman. Why? Because amongst the Canaanim, lo yimatsebo davar kadosh. Amongst the Canaanite and the Canaanite women, there were no sparks. There were no vestiges. There were no remnants of kedusha that would then be reclaimed. And that's why he says we haven't had uh, converts from. The Kananim. Then he goes into 
another aspect. He says, if there is no Kedusha amongst the Canaanite, and we know that we go into exile in order to lift up and out the sparks of holiness from those nations, and if we're saying that amongst the Canaanites there are no Nitzotze Kedusha, sparks of Kedusha, so why do we have Gullus? Why are we exiled amongst the Canaanim? Why do we have that exile? And he goes into, there are two types of Kedusha that are held captive. One is Nishamot Yikarot, precious souls that come out, that are born, and those are the ones that end up converting. That we don't find amongst the Canaanites, the, Can- the Canaanites, the, Canani- the Canaanim. But the second is a Kedusha holiness that is stuck in a Kalipa, stuck in this outer peel. And the Eino Yotze Klal Ela Me Orev Murav Klipa, right? And it's always mixed up with this Kalipa. And the only way it separates from it is kasher yatzer Yisrael. When this Canaanite causes tsar to a Jew, at that point, then the Kedusha, it would seem, can't remain with him anymore. When he sinks to that level, and then that's what that that's how the kedusha leaves and that's how he explains the 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 the, the challenges the subjugation the travails the tragedies that we have had from the kanaanim but that's only by the kanaanim but otherwise it is the nations of the world so those who convert from the nations of the world those are Nitsutse Kedusha, sparks of Kedusha that separate themselves. And Avad, Avudim Hayu, very powerful words I said before. Avadim Hayu, Avudim Hayu, they were lost, Vilanuheim, for they belong to us. They belong, you belong to the Jewish people. Okay, I saw that on Arachaim, on end of Pasha's Toldos, and I said, that's a good Arachaim to learn with my esteemed group over here. Okay, let us continue with the laws of of brachot. Okay, those who are following in this book over here, this laws of brachos, pitre halacha. Um, so we are on chapter um, six, page 166. Okay, so the question is, <laughs> When is there the need for an additional bracha when I am continuing to eat, right? What constitutes a breach, a hefsek in halachic terms, a separation between my bracha and my eating and my now continuing to eat that will necessitate a new bracha? And what is not considered to be a hefseik, a breach? And what then would be then just considered considered a continuation, right? So we know, right? Yeah, yeah, you have a, you have, you're eating something, you make a bracha, you take a bite. You don't make another bracha on the next bite, right? That's just a continuation of the same eating. You took a sip, you continue drinking, you don't make another bracha, right? But here the question is, what is included in that original bracha. Okay, so if food was on the table at the time of the bracha, whether or not I planned to eat that food, and of course we're talking about when the food is the same bracha. So I've got a bowl of grapes on the table, and I take a clementine. And I make a boy prayer eights on the clementine. And I did not have in mind to eat that, those grapes, but the grapes were in front of me on the table when I made the bracha 
on the Clementine, right? Then one will not need to recite. If I decide now, oh, I'm going to have some of those grapes. Those look good. I don't need to make a bracha. The bracha they made on the Clementine with the grapes in front of me will cover that. Okay. So let's see. There, there are a bunch of factors at play here, okay? And it will depend, right? Now, certainly one of the most important factors is what was the intention at the time that I made my bracha, right? If I intended to eat more or to eat other things, then clearly that bracha also went on the other things, right? So that's simple. And if, the example I like to give, I, I'm making a mizonos, and I said, I'm just going to have one Entenmann's donut. One, and that's it. No more than that one. That was my thinking when I picked up an Entenmann's donut. But we know what happens. We get that sugar rush, and we have that chemical reaction in our body, and it's a lot harder to say no to the second one than it is to say no to the first one. And now I said, well, maybe I'll have just one more, right? So what will the din then be in terms of a bracha? Since I had explicit dot, I'm not going to have any more than this. I'm just having one and no more. So then if I decide to give in and have another donut, so then I will need to make another bracha, because I clearly closed my bracha off of that first one. Okay. So now, this is, the first part we're dealing with is food eaten as a snack, right? Now, why is a snack going to be different than a meal? By a meal, what can we, yes, Gabriella? Oh, sorry. Um, I was going to say snacks are um, exclusive and meals are inclusive in terms of intention. Right. I sit down to a meal. My unspoken intention is I'm not going to have a mouthful and then walk away. Right. As Gabrielle put it, it's more inclusive. Right. So therefore, my bracha is inherently going to include more than in the case of a snack. A snack, right? I might take a mouthful and then walk away. That's what a snack is. Or if I'll finish the bag, it's not necessarily I'm going to ha then go and have other things. Okay. So these are the factors. One who had a specific intention at the time of the bracha, right? That's gone about at 167 now. If you had an inclusive intention, if I made a bracha specifically intended to include any other food he may later eat, he need not recite a new bracha when eating or drinking any other food requiring the same bracha, right? Even if I didn't have in intent, I'm going to eat this specific food. But if I sat down and I said, I'm going to make now a shahako on, the, uh, on this food, and I have in mind any other shahakos that I will decide to have. I'm making a boy priyadama. I have in mind any other bar priya damas, I'm covered, right? If I had in mind this bracha will cover any others, that's clear, the bracha will cover. Or B, on 168, an exclusive intention, right? If I said I'm eating this and this alone, I'm eating this and this alone, and then I decide I want to have more, so then I'll need to make another bracha. My express intention clearly establishes an inclusive in intention will include everything. An exclusive intention, and therefore the inclusive, I'll, I, will, no, I won't need to make another bracha. My exclusive intention will exclude. I decide I want to have more, I'll need to make a bracha. Those are the easy cases, right? Now, what happens when there is no specific intention? Right, that's on page 169 now, right? 
This is the usual situation. We make a bracha and we start to eat. Okay. So here, let's see where he's going to give us the, the, the bottom line. Okay. So on one hand, a person normally, once we start eating, we keep on eating, right? But we're talking about a snack. That's not necessarily the case. So on 170, he gives us the rule, okay? It's under that chart over there. If either of the following two conditions, no new bracha is necessary. So I made a bracha without any specific intent. If I want to eat more of the same food, right? Either one of these is enough. If, I, if I'm eating more of the same food, I took a clementine. I made a bar prayer eight, so I ate the clementine. I wasn't thinking I'm going to have more than one. I wasn't thinking I'm going to have one and no more. I just made a bracha and ate a clementine. I want another clementine. What's the din? I do not need to make another bracha. If it's the same food, again, when I had clear, inclusive or exclusive, that is what governs. We're talking about where I had no clear intention. I made a bracha and I ate some grapes. Now I want to have some more grapes. I want to have, I made a bracha and a clementine. I want to have another clementine. So then I do not need to make a bracha. Okay. Now, number two, if I made a bracha, how about I made a bracha on the clementine and now I want to have some grapes. Now I want to have some grapes, right? Same bracha. So I want to have more clementine, nothing to talk about. It's clear. Don't make another bracha. I want to have something else of the same bracha. So there, B, 171, the top of the page, if some of the original food remains, then I will not need to make a diff another bracha on the grapes. If I have not yet finished eating my clementine, I will not need to make another bracha on the grapes. Why is that? Explain that to me. Since some of the clementine remains, so therefore, what do we have? My original bracha is still in play. It hasn't finished yet. I made a bracha on this clementine. If I've not yet finished that clementine, my original bracha is still in play. It's still, so to speak, hovering over me. And therefore, anything else that I want to eat of the same bracha, I do not need to make a bracha. So if any one of those two factors, it's the same food, even though none of the original remains, or it's a different food with the same bracha, but some of the original remains, and if either one of those factors are there, no new bracha. But in the absence of both of those factors, I finish my clementine. Now I want to have some grapes. So there I will need to make another bracha. Okay? Now, in order to avoid this, this won't do much for your diet, but in order to avoid this, they recommend whenever I'm making a bracha, I have in mind this will include anything I might decide to eat. Okay? And that way, within that sitting, you are covered. Again, not going to do much for a person trying to watch their weight, but that will take care of a lot of the um, a lot of the sfekot, a lot of the unsureties. Okay, now if it's during a fixed meal, there it's different, right? There, even if none of the I made a bore pre ha'adama 
on my on my I started with a slice of cantaloupe or honeydew. I made it bari I made a bari priyadama. Now the meal continues, and there's salad, and there are there's some potatoes and beans and peas, and there's some chicken, right? So now there's I made a bari priyadama already on the cantaloupe. There's no cantaloupe left. And now I've got another food. I've got my salad. I got my potatoes. I have other food, all of which is bari priyadama. Since it's a meal, even though I have neither of those two factors, meaning it was not in front of me, right? uh, it's not the same food, and it's not, it's not the same food, and I have nothing left of the original food, nevertheless, at a meal, that first bori priyadama that you made will cover all things that are bori priyadama. You made one bori priya eight, it'll cover all the bori priya eight. You made one shahakol that will cover all the shahakols that will follow. In this case, the fact that none of the original food remains, or that one wishes to eat a different type of food, an orange following an apple is of no consequence. In all cases, no new bracha is required okay now that's when i'm in my own home okay but if i'm at a a, 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 let's say it's not a meal i'm a guest at someone's home i'm a guest i'm having some snacks at that person's home there where i'm a guest the it works differently why because when i'm a guest I am at the mercy of my host, right? So I know that I'm not the one who's in the driver's seat here. I'm not the one who is controlling it. And therefore, whatever the host, the bottom 172, may eventually serve is considered included in the guest's bracha, okay? Unless, of course, when I'm at, I'm a guest at someone's house and they offer me some, some, some donuts and I have some, have I had in mind, okay, I'm going to have these donuts, but I'm not having anything else. Then even though they bring out some crackers afterwards, they bring out some other Mizono things afterwards, should I decide to have some of that once if I had a, a, a clear, exclusive intention then clearly I'll need to make another bracha. But here we're talking about in a case of stam, where I didn't have anything particular in mind. Okay. Now, the next issue over here is what's called a hesech hadas. Hesech hadas is, hesech means a removal of my dat, meaning my intent was I have moved on. My intent is, this meal is over. So then, if I had a hesach hadas, that my intent was, this meal is over. Let me see how he defines it. Right, a decision to eat no more. Right? And then I change my mind. So after a hesach hadas, doing something which signifies a decision not to eat anymore, and then I change my mind, I do want to eat some more, so then I will also need to make another bracha. And there are examples, right? If I, right, those who wash mayim acharon and they wash their hands after a meal, that signifies the end of the meal. You wash my macharon and now you decide, oh, I'll drink a little bit more, right? Have a little bit more. That will re- require a bracha. Yeah. Right? If I made a bracha acharona, right? Then certainly that closed out a bracha acharona, my after blessing. That certainly closes out my eating uh, episode, and I want to eat more. I'll need to make another bracha. If I leave, 
where I am. Right? I leave the place where I am. Right? Now, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see some qualification on that. But I'll need to make another bracha. Questions. I don't, you might have already already asked. If not, fill out a little bit more. If not, um, what if what if you start eating and then you realize, oh, I haven't said it, and I feel guilty, then I want like I want to say it now. Okay. So if a person mistakenly started eating without a bracha and caught oneself, then certainly before eating any further. One would make a bracha and then continue eating. Mouthful. Huh? So mouthful. So what did we say? It depends what your mouth is full of. Okay? If your mouth is full of something that can be um, in a dignified manner removed, right? Lollipop, a grape, right? So then one would remove it, make a bracha, continue eating. If one has something which uh, cannot, um, which is of value and cannot, right, be removed, then you put it to the side of your mouth and make a bracha and then swallow. If it's a liquid that one can't do that, right, say it, don't spray it, right? So there one would have to remove it from one's mouth, make the bracha, and then continue. You can't say the bracha like in, like it can go on. No, a, a, a bracha, like anything, uh, like any aspect of, of, of prayer, it needs to be, it needs to be said, right? We can't just think a bracha, right? Same thing in davening. We can't, we have to actually say the words. Ideally, say it loud enough that you can hear it, right? By the amidah, you should hear it, no one else should hear it, but it needs to be, um, vocalized. We can't just think it. That will not. That will not suffice. Okay. Another question. Um, oh, about the, you were mentioning location. When you leave the location and then you realize, oh, I haven't said the ending bracha. Would it yeah. So ideally, one would go back and make the bracha, the after bracha, in that place. But one did the evet, meaning if one didn't and one said it elsewhere, that will be, that is acceptable. Right? Very often we have the lechatchila, the ideal way of doing it. And then we have the bidi avad, which was actually two words, bidi avad. If that you have done it already, then you, right, let's say, right, you made the bracha elsewhere. So if it's not a bracha, if it's said elsewhere, I've got to go back and say it. But since we say bidieve, bidiavad, it is a good bracha, then you can't go back and say it again. That would end up being a bracha levatala, a blessing in vain, if you were to go back. Okay. There are different types of a hesech adas, right, where Okay, now this happens sometimes on Shabbos, right? That in the middle of the meal, right? This happens more where you have uh, multiple mincha minyanim during the day, right? Uh, well, here we, I guess the Sfarim should do it earlier. We do it, the Ashkenazim do it a little bit later. But let's say this person's at a meal. Actually, this can happen very often over here. Someone's eating the meal over here at the, at the Ashkenazic Kiddush, and then the person runs upstairs to daven mincha with the svardim, and then comes back to his meal, to his or her meal over here, right? So there the ruling is as follows, right? If there are other people that one left at that table, right? Right? So then one does not need to repeat the bracha. 
Okay, opt- he says optimally he should have someone else remaining there. Right, interesting. But he says that one should wash Natila Yadayim again without a bracha, right, before continuing the meal. Okay, let's say sleeping during the meal. Right? This can happen on the this happens more on the later Friday nights than the earlier Friday nights that we're now blessed. I love these early Friday nights. But right? in the later Friday nights, right? So then um sleeping, which is going to lie down, that is a half sick. Napping, which is nodding off during the meal, right? That is not considered to be to be a half sick. Okay. Okay, and once again on page 183, right, when it comes to a guest, we look things very, very differently, right? The A guest decides to stop eating, that's not considered a hesachadas. It's not considered a, a, a suspension of his eating. Why? Because he is at the behest of the host, right? And therefore, he stopped eating because he didn't realize that there was more coming out. And one time we, uh, we, we, had, we had dear friends and neighbors who lived in Israel and he was a caterer and he would bring home amazing amounts of food for Friday night meals. And we were eating there one time, Natalie and I and the kids, and I think my sister-in-law was over, so she didn't know. But the first course came out, right? And it was different types of fish, salmon and gefilte fish and a whole host of salads. There was so much that came out she thought this must be the meal. So she helped herself very well, right? But then she was shocked that we finished that and then came the soup and then came the main course, right? So when you're, when you're a guest at someone's meal, right, you don't know really what's coming. So you're thinking that, oh, this would be it. That is, that becomes moot, okay? That becomes moot. Okay, but conversely, very interestingly, let's say the host says, okay, time to bench, right? And then I'm so thirsty. I want to grab, right, to drink a little bit more. That's a problem. Because just like I'm at the behest of the host when it comes to not needing a bracha because my thinking I've stopped he says we haven't stopped. Well, so Tuma has behest when he says, game over, time to bench. So that is the end for me also, right? Right. Unless he did not take the host's hezekadah seriously and plan to continue eating, right? Hmm. Interesting. Rabbi, so how does this work out? For like uh sheet. Are we considered your guest at that point, or is it like? No, 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 no. We're, okay, we're, the we're, times we're, where we don't. We're all eating time. together. We're okay, all eating right. together. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you for uh. We're all we're, we're, we're all we're all in this together over there. Okay. So until one actually washes their hands, my machron, and I say by suddishly sheet, one will be allowed to. To continue eating, but uh, but 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 Shayan by Sudash Lishit once one stop once one washes one's hands, so then if one decides I want to drink a little bit more whatever it is it would require a bracha. Okay. The next is a shinoi makom. Okay, and this gets pretty complicated. Shinoi makom is when I change my location. Okay. 
Sorry? Hmm? Oh, yeah, we'll be there soon, right? Yeah. Now, right, when I leave where I am, that's usually considered to be a conclusion of my eating. Okay? So, the question arises then, right? So, do I need to then make a bracha harona? on what I've eaten already. I left my place, but I'm going to continue eating. So I definitely need to make a bracha rishona, a new blessing on that which I'm continuing to eat in a different place. However, I don't need to make another bracha. I don't need to make a bracha harona and then again a bracha harona. The, the after blessing that I make at the end will cover everything. So let's see 188. Number one there. A1, leaving the house. One who is eating an apple, okay, which does not require the long bracha harona, just according to Fashot, in a house and went to a different house or stepped outside, must recite a new bracha if he wants to continue eating that apple, right? So this, this comes up fairly often, I think, right? We grab something on our way out. Right? You make the bracha in the house, now you're walking out of the house, we've got a problem over here. Right? Right? No significance that his intention was to leave the house. He left the house only momentarily. He wishes to return back to his original place. He had no intention of interrupting his eating. He continued to hold the apple in his hand. It doesn't make a difference. Right? He'll need to make another bracha. So you take, you, you take an apple, take a few bites, Walk out of your house. Now you're getting into your car, out of your house. One take another bite, another bracha. Right? However, the end of number one, if one steer, merely stepped out of the door to his yard or lawn and did not enter a public thoroughfare, right? he stepped outside for a moment into, right, out of the sliding doors into the, into the patio, into the backyard there for a moment, then, as long as the original place is visible, one would not. We're talking about here where I left my house. I'm going out now. I would need to make another bracha. Okay. Now, leaving a room, one room to another room in a house, does not necessitate another bracha. Okay. Number Rabbi, four. I'm so sorry. Rabbi? Yes. What about like a school? Say like if you make the bracha for coffee in your classroom, but then you need to like go walk kids or grab kids from the playground, come back or like go to a coffee room. When you come back, this is like a common situation with me. When I come back, should I make another bracha or is it, I'm usually coming back to that same spot for the coffee. Yes, yes. But if you've left where you were, right? Yeah. And right, you know, if we're talking about a school building, that's different. That's different rooms in one house. But if we're talking about that you've got to go outside to go to different places, so then I think that would be considered a a shinoi makon. Okay. And that, All right, would, thank that you. would necessitate. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Let's look at number four here on page one ninety one. Right? A porch, the top, covered by a roof is considered the equivalent of another room in the house and that would not require another bracha. A sukkah attached to a house, another room of the house. A porch not covered by a roof cannot be regarded as a room. So you, you enter an open porch from the house. Even if you plan to do so, you must repeat the bracha, right? Like I said before though, but if you can see the original place, then it's not. And therefore, one would not repeat the bracha. Okay. So I think I think that's what it will boil down to, Cheyenne, in your in your case, right? Can you see the original place when you're going out to different places? If you're all within with an eye shot, you're going out just momentarily, and it's with an eye shot of the original place, right? Not another bracha. Not with an eye shot, then you would have to make another bracha. Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Rabbi, yes. If you begin to eat an apple, 
um, I'm, I'm not talking about sh Shabbat, obviously, um, but then you have to leave and you're driving, eating the apple. Uh, you're okay. under. Okay. So here, le, le, uh, page 192. Okay. Right. Oh, interesting. Okay. So maybe I'm about my, my kid, Apple. Let, let's wait and see. Right. Now, I'm not sure if this is what you're asking, Leticia. If I made the bracha, you know, let's say I'm going for a walk. Or I'm going for a drive. Right. So I made the bracha when, when I'm already outside my house. Right. And so there, that's not considered a shinoi makom, a change of place, because the eating was never confined to a specific place. So on, on 9a, one who begins eating while walking may continue to do so without regard to the rules of shinoi makom, regardless of the distance or the fact that the original place is no longer visible. Shinoi makom means I was in this place and now I'm changing it, when I was never planning on being in one place. Right in the course of eating while walking, one enters a, or, and leaves a car. No, you, you, that, that's that's all fine. Now, one who recites a brach in a house with the intention of leaving immediately is not considered to have confined his eating to a particular place. So, one second. Okay, so that that we said before, you started in the house. Then you walk out, you need to make another bracha, right? But if when I made the bracha, the original plan, right? Again, 9C, one recites a bracha in a house with the intention of leaving immediately. I guess that's the difference, mm -hmm. right? If I started eating the apple in my house and planning on leaving towards the middle, that would require another bracha. But if my plan was to leave immediately, that's not considered to have confined his eating to a particular place. So you buy an ice cream or a candy bar in a store and begin eating on the way out, you continue eating upon leaving the store without repeating the bracha. Okay. However, D, if at the time the bracha one had the intent to wait, eat a bit, and then leave the house, then a new bracha is required upon leaving the house. Okay, so that's the difference going to be, right? You know, sometimes, you know, I I, I have my thing with chocolate, so uh, so when I decide to give in, what I'll try, what I'll do is I'll have I'll have chocolate, but as I'm leaving the house, and that way I know I'll be confined to the one or the two that I stuck in my pocket, whatever it is, but I'll be confined to that amount, and I won't just keep um, keep taking more. So if the intent I made the bracha and I'm leaving immediately, then that's not considered a shinoi makom, a changing of the place, because I never established this as the place where I am, um, where I'm going to be eating. Interesting. Okay, if the food is in my mouth, my 10A, the chewing gum, right? So then that is considered one act of eating. I don't need to make another bracha when I go in or out of the house, right? If the food is in my hand, that is not so clear. And therefore, what one should do is stop eating. And that way, you get yourself out of that suffix state and then make the bracha. Okay, just one second.
Okay. Okay, this comes to something that you were brought up before. If I'm eating food that requires ideally the bracha harona to be in the original place of eating, right? Bread, benching, right? Cakes, grains, al hamichya, where ideally the bracha should be repeated, should be said in that original place. So therefore, if I leave without the bracha harona, ideally, I should return to make a bracha harona or continue eating elsewhere and make a bracha harona there. So therefore, since that's the case, since this food requires me to ideally make a bracha harona, either in my original place or continue eating elsewhere, so there, my changing of my place is not considered to be a shinoi, is not considered to be a change, right? So therefore, right, it's not a shinoi makom when I leave the building and I do not need to repeat that bracha. This applies clearly to bread and also to al hamichya. Now, remember we, we, we've, we've mentioned a number of times how much food must I eat to obligate me to make a pro, a blessing before the food? Hmm? Olive, olive size. No, before the food? No, before the food. Any amount. That's but right. a bracha charon is only when I ate enough, enough right? A chalta v'savata, at least let's say a kezayit. I have to have eaten a, a, a somewhat significant amount of food. So this bracha will, this rule, this halacha will only come in play if I've eaten enough to require that after blessing. If I had just one little bite of of the of the cake, for example, then that would not. Can I, can I ask if if by mistake I forgot on Shabbos to do. Uh, Amazon, and I left, and I went home. But I was, I was here. Can I do Birkat Hamasan? I'm pretty sure, Bidi Eved, you can. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Yeah. But ideally, you know, the, and we all, we we all make these mistakes. But ideally, one wants to get into the habit of before I stand up after eating, right? Bracha Harona, which let me make it and then and then let me go and uh, take care of it. Okay. Complicated. We'll save Iker and Tafel for next week. Iker and Tafel is what is the main and what is the secondary. Oh boy, not easy stuff. If you find it complicated, so do I. Don't worry. Okay, everybody. Thank you, Rabbi. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, good night.